12 months ago, Oliver Ortman lifted the Moscone Cup after a dramatic sudden-death shootout. It could be the same way this year. It's Europe 13, the USA 13. Only this time there's a time restriction. The match has to be over in the next hour, so whoever's ahead at 6 o'clock will win the 1996 Moscone Cup. European captain Oliver Ortman faces Shannon Dalton of the USA. They'll play just one set only as we join Alan Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, now making his second appearance of the afternoon, will you welcome back a young man who at 15 won the Kentucky State Championship, the youngest ever player to achieve that feat, back into the arena. Will you welcome, please, Shannon, the Cannon Doctor. Gentlemen, his opponent, the captain of Europe and an outstanding performer, respected worldwide, 33 times champion of his country and 16 times European champion. He is the former WPA nine ball champion of the world. Will you welcome, please, from Germany, the machine, Oliver Ottmann! <laughs> In the commentary box, Sid Waddell, and alongside him, Jim White. And the crowd still filing in for this one. Another big one in the Moscone Cup, and Europe just about got the easiest point they've had the whole tournament. Shannon Dalton almost did a three and a half gainer coming down the stairs. But as it is, a tall order for the cannon. He's up against the captain of the European side, the machine, Oliver Ortman. Shannon a big lad, not the lad to send the Piggly Wiggly for the cookies, because he probably eat a few on the way home. Thirteen points apiece in a race to 16 for the 1996 Moscone Cup. You pick a winner, said I can't. Well, this. Very tight. A mirror of the actual overall tightness of the match as Alan Chamberlain with his eagle eyes is still hovering to try and work out who won the lag. He's having to get out whatever passes for the slide rule here. So he gives it to the American. And Shannon here still enjoying it, even though it's incredibly tense. He's got, he's got those sleeves rolled up for a reason. You're about to see it. Well, the crowd letting you know how unsuccessful the American was on that break. Cue ball into the pocket and ball in hand for Oliver Ortman. Oh, well, Jim, he did say, uh, could I stick out my Geordie neck on this one? Ortman rarely plays two buttons, and the key rule, folks, number two. The reduced format, one set each from here on in. Best of five racks. And of course, there is a time factor. As we approach six o'clock, the nerves will be fraying, because it's whoever is ahead, then takes the Moscone. Absolutely. Whoever can get in front here will have the clock as an ally. Down to one set, you've got to win by two clear racks, and if we get to four apiece, it's a tie break. I was gonna say, the German rarely plays two buttons back to back. His last one, he was not in top form, and he's got the sort of self-control. Yes, lost to Hopkins. 
So you could see him crank up to do a good performance here because his last one wasn't up to his usual standards. He's making short work of this one. The machine, mechanical around the table. Is Dorsprung working beautifully? Yeah. One nil Europe. Europe. In this set, the one and only set, a best of five. Oliver Ortman will be breaking off here in the second rack against Shannon Dalton from America. He could take plenty of that, jolly, jolly, jolly. <laughs> and as Jim suggested, German dominance in the, well, the German heavyweights. Maybe they should change the name to NEIN ball. Second rack, Europe to break. Jump <laughs> up again. Oh, the crowd loving this. Getting the same sort of reception as Klingsman used to get at Tottenham. Perfect break that time for Mortman. The ball's ideally spread, everything open to the pockets, and Dalton, I think, knows that he's staring 2-0 right in the face. That tipple of the cue at the end. The cue in action, fascinating. Nowhere near as smooth as snooker. But watch the way it sometimes dips in to give you that extra bit of control on the right. And he really is fancy in the rook here. Is Ortman. Tough not to get excited. Uh. Get away, kid. I've got a chill pill down me. <laughs> Straightish on the red. Deep. Put screw on it, screwing back. For the orange, nostrils flaring like a derby favorite, ready for the gate to go up. He's really loving this. Oliver's got that sort of look about him. You'd rather have him collecting your debts, never mind playing nine ball. Determination and focus. <laughs> yeah, he'd like to get his mitts on the silverware. And I'm sure if Joe and Willie Moscone is up there tickling the blue bays above and beyond the clouds, he'd be proud of the standard here. And he'd love the tight finish that's coming up. Slightly overhit. He wanted lots of angle, but not quite that much. But the one saving grace, he's got to concentrate on the pot here because the angle is natural to take the cue ball back for the eight at the opposite end of the table. So just the pot. Just over half ball needed. Oh, it bubbled. <laughs> well, now, Shannon Dalton with the same sort of problem. The lack of position coming back to haunt Oliver Ortman. It was never going to be easy, that shot. Yes, when a tough Teutonic lad like Ortman starts pointing the table where he wanted the ball to go, you know that we're in the last stages of a grueling 40 competition. And it's got to be over at six, folks. Oh, lovely thin cut. Great shot from Shannon Dalton. So that miss is going to be punished. One one, the USA and USA. Europe. And Shannon Dalton will be breaking off in the third rack. So the advantage sways back to the Americans. Welcome back to the Moscone Cup. It's now two racks all in this single set. Remember, the winner has to go two racks clear. It's two racks apiece in a race to see who can take 
A one-point lead here between Europe and the USA, 13-13. Right, Jim, put you on the spot. How would you escape? Well, right now, Oliver's looking at the two cushions, bottom cushion, side cushion. The nine may be in his way going the right way, and certainly right now the green the other way. But there's your score line, as I said, two racks apiece. It was a best of five. You've got to win by two clear racks. And as Jim picks up the magic pencil, the two cushion escape is his only chance. That's the first cush. And then to the left, the escape is passed about two inches to the side of the nine. So let's see if Jim's accurate. He reckons two inches to the far side. Oh, wow. sniff past and uh, awful. Enough. Enough the cushion. It was that good of a safety from Shannon Dalton, and now he's going to reap the harvest. But that close. Look at that. Oh, incredible. 16th of an inch of that. Right now, the cue ball in hand. It's the pink four down for the orange five. And the obvious problem, brown and black. So Shannon's got to try and develop that slightly to open it up because that's going to be what may provide the stumbling block and give Ortman another visit. Right now, the orange five, the ball on. And the green six is next. So he's got to try and develop the brown without putting himself in trouble on the green. No. Needs Side angle. Go straight there. Now if he can drop in behind the brown, he may be able to play it to one of the top pockets. If he's got the angle on this green six, brown seven's the next ball on. Looking to go ahead 3-2 in the set. That was too hard to lay the snooker. We're into the last hour now of this 1996 Moscone Cup. 13-13 each match now of paramount importance. It's who gets the 16 first or who is ahead at 6 p.m. If there's a match in progress, that will be taken into account. If there was a tie then, there would be one more set. The most dramatic hour, I would think, in World Pool. It was dramatic last year. I think we probably topped that last year. For over four hours, Europe wanted only one chalk as the Americans dragged nearer and nearer to 15 apiece. Here we go then. The black. And. He's run just right to make the nine as easy as possible. This for three, two in the set. That and that's what it is, USA. three, two to the USA. Europe led at one stage, 10, six and 11, seven. Four points, that's the biggest leads they enjoyed. And since then, <coughs> it's been all America. They've fought back long and hard to go in front, 13, 12. Right now, it's 13-13, and Shannon Dalton looking good to take one more point for the Americans. So it may go it's down in European pool Americans, history as Black Sunday, or more accurately, Pot Black Sunday. <laughs> Baron Break. A barren break there, so things look very ominous for Europe here. Right now, he tried to lay the snooker, and he might be able to get the side of the one, but what an enticing doubles match we've got following this one. Steve Davis and Ronnie O'Sullivan up against the cream of the American crop. Earl Strickland and the captain, C.J. Wiley. It's all to come. That makes this match that much more important for Europe. It's 
not a straight hit and he will sw yeah the <coughs> so the shot is a bit of swerve I reckon onto the yellow to plant onto the pink that's what well, he's there's two in the nine, Jim. Look at them. Well, he's Lined got up. his jump cue out, Sid. That means he's going to jump over the edge of the eight ball, the black one. Try and plant that one onto the pink four. And they haven't been fruitful. They've been contacting these jump shots, but this easy. Here we he's go. Have to pop the yellow. He's going to try and pop the pink. <sighs> the yellow just snitched within a whisker of the pink. <laughs> Oliver, I think, expected to get that one. Great chance here then. Whiskers it in, but he's not sure he can do a direct hit on the blue, Jim. Bit of carelessness from Dalton. He's just one rack away from a point for the USA, but it looks like he can get through to it, Sid. Yeah. Very close. Gonna have to work hard to get position on the red there. I don't think he's got a direct line to the red. Well, you heard him say, just as that cue ball inched near the green six, that's what he was afraid of. If he takes this rack, the Americans get another match point. That would go to 13, 14 in favor. Well, that three must have hit the cushion, otherwise it'd be a foul, because you've got to contact a cushion after contacting the ball on, so it must have nestled back onto the cushion because other than that, I can't see any other cushion that could have been contacted. Ortman puzzling out the snooker. It's 3 2 to Dalton. If he takes this rack, that takes this individual match. Running for cover. Perfect speed on the cue ball. Again. I'm sure Oliver had his heart in his mouth for a moment there. That's pretty close. <laughs> but there's the time in the right corner. 55 minutes remaining and counting down. <coughs> yeah. Just moved it out. And has he got a, I don't think he's got a direct path. Might have to swerve to this. It's a vital time, Dalton, three, two up. And here's the bird's eye view. Shannon Dalton shot right out of the corner pocket. Got a little fortunate there, he mishit that one. But the Reds come around the angles to leave Oliver Ortman snookered. There you can see the green impeding direct progress onto the red. At the moment, will the stars and stripes be raised over the Moscone? Or will the European gold stars on an Asia background? Coming off the cush to the red. He could leave it open. I think he stuck it up. There's still problems though. Oliver knows he made a mistake there, but lots of work for Shannon Dalton. The pink four, the next ball on, five and six, nicely in the open, but that's where the problems will certainly start for him after the six ball. Brown seven, tied up against the eight ball on the right hand side. There's all the practice room, Sid, all watching and practicing. Yeah. Everybody in shirt sleeve order as the orange goes into here. He's trying to dislodge the brown. He wanted 
wasn't the ideal breakup, but he's got the shots to get in position now. It should be in position off the cush for the Brown. I think it's weighted perfectly. <laughs> Things looking sick for Ottman. Super out this from Shannon Dalton. What an effort. As soon as he developed the seven and eight, you knew he was in with a big opportunity. Has he got enough angle here? A deep screw maybe, or heavy follow with side? Tremendous effort this from Dalton. Yep, psychologically boost for the Yanks will be this beating of the European right. captain, Jim. And the set. Well, Shannon Dalton is sure playing his part in this one. He's won two oh. matches here this afternoon. He's given America a 14-13 lead. So the USA now lead 14-13, but now it's Steve Davis and Ronnie O'Sullivan in what could be a decisive doubles against Earl Strickland and C.J. Wiley. Ladies and gentlemen, we come to the first doubles match in this year's uh, Moscone Cup, sponsored by Dr. Martins, and it brings to the table the formidable pairing of two of America's outstanding performers from Denver to Dagnum, from London to Las Vegas. It's all the same to the powerful combination of Earl Strickland and C.J. Wiley. And ladies and gentlemen, their opponents, both giants from another world, the world of snooker, looking to cause the biggest upset in the world of pool. Williams has cracked the choke there. Said I've only got the one cue between you. It might just be enough, Jim, because this could be a humdinger. It's a very important match. Here are the formalities, the gentlemanly bit. Massive respect by Strickland for Davis and for Ronnie as CJ, the American captain, lags off for Davis. It's only one set. It's the best of five, but you've got to go two clear. America leads 14-13 in the Moscone Cup. Well, right now, Europe under big-time pressure. Interesting prospect here. Wiley beat Davis in the singles. O'Sullivan beat Strickland in the singles. So how do you figure the result of the doubles? A brave man or a fool? Do you want two answers or one? <laughs> it's going to be a bit of pride at stake, as you said, because there's victories and defeats have been dished out. Here's Earl of Pearl. And the scatter a bit sweet for the Americans there. Do you fancy the very thin cut left, Jim, on the one? It looks like it may be on, but... Earl, very much like Davis, plays the percentages. And he knows how well Ronnie O'Sullivan can pot. He was the victim of O'Sullivan last night. This to hold the white here. 
would have been difficult. It goes into the middle. But the middle pockets are about as generous as Scrooge. 43 minutes remaining because at 6 o'clock, whatever the state of the match, it is over. But there could be a match in progress. Whoever is ahead or goes ahead takes the Moscone. 6 o'clock, the deadline. Or the living line if you're ahead. The captain and his lieutenant right now, C.J. Wiley and Strickland. It's Wiley at the table. Beautifully weighted. And did mean the kiss on the green, but it hasn't hampered any obvious cause he's got in mind. The problem CJ, right a man who picked up $88,000 for winning. Pool match, you'll have no nerves here, Jim. Well, the problem, as Wiley, happy to see that four ball disappear, is certainly in the shape of the seven ball, the brown one next to the nine. Down in the left corner as CJ looks on, he's gonna need angle to try and disturb that. Bad shot by his standards, and it's gonna dolly up. But Davis and Davis moving faster than I've ever seen him in my life. He usually smoothly glides up. He looks eager to take this chance. Well, he had to move pretty fast to keep up with Ronnie coming down the stairs. But look there, Barry Hearn and Vincent Fake. Two mm, big nice, players in this tournament. Nice suit, Barry. Shame about the tie. The crowd. Absolutely tense here. And knowing that if Europe have got a hope, you couldn't want bet two better lads out. And Davis and Ronnie. He's got the angle here on the six ball, the green. He's got to try and disturb the seven and the nine. <sighs> the Moscone Cup. If you've just come in, it's held by Europe after a brilliant match a year ago between Lou Butera and Jimmy White. Jimmy got it. The Americans are hungry for CJ Wiley, their captain, to hoist the trophy. He hasn't cleared the brown the way he would have liked. There is no contact for the pocket. All the knowledge of a six-time world champion is gonna be called into play here. <coughs> it looks like all he can do is flick the seven off the left side cushion to the bottom cushion, and O'Sullivan can only watch. Steve, I believe, will try to take the cue ball down towards the black, but he wants to try and leave the seven ball in this area, and it looks like the black will be, or the white will be coming off the cushion down towards the black and these Americans can put them from all angles, as Steve knows. That's a weak effort. This goes. Strickland will be taking this one on. Needs a 30% on the thin side hit. And remember, the matches now are only one set. Best of five racks. First of three, but you've got to get two clear in racks. America lead. 14-13, and we're coming up to about the last 37 minutes of the match. The overall Moscone. Earl the Pearl thrives under pressure. No flaw in this Pearl so far, and they hold the rails. Rock USA. Big rack for the USA. They lead 1-0 in this best of five. CJ Wiley and Earl Strickland looking to go too clear, a lead they haven't enjoyed since the very start of this event. Pool, a great discipline, a difficult discipline to come to from eight ball or snooker. The break 
is not a rhythmic thing. It is transfer of power. Jimmy White had great trouble with it when he was practicing. I've seen him. He said, modify. Ronnie O'Sullivan came here about 60 hours ago and didn't know the rules. He's got in trouble a couple of times by not knowing the contact, the cushion rule. Absolutely. Earl looks like he's going to be breaking off with his playing cue here. Or at least he's got a different cue, certainly than the, the black one that he was using earlier on, Sid. Showboat in, playing to the crowd, suggesting that he uses it for fishing when he's not queuing with it. Well, he may have changed cues, but it's the same result. No good. Left them open and wide. Good chance for Ronnie then. Step in, fill his boots. Level it up, a one rack each. Then conduct needed on the blue. It's in. The rest look relatively easy, Jim. There's no such a thing right now. There's just too much pressure out there. Slithering by the orange five. Ronnie prowling. Looking now to pull back, giving himself a good shot on the green. The brown is begging to be potted. No trouble getting position on the black. Just needs a feather tickle. And that's just about perfect for where he wants to come to, to take the nine. Steve Davis, grinning like a Halloween mask. Thunderous applause for Ronnie. Steve's face splitting in a grin. What a piece all up in in Dagenham. Steve Davis is enjoying this immensely. He was smiling throughout the clearance. O'Sullivan magnificently produced. Welcome back. The European pairing of Ronnie O'Sullivan and Steve Davis now lead by three racks to two. Good cue ball control in the middle, and look how they're lying. A great break by the pearl. Held cue ball in the middle, like the manual says, and they are all easy by this man's standards. He is confident. Sometimes crowds affect his mood, but not his concentration, Jim. He snookered himself on the two. Strickland, when called upon under extreme pressure, has been a giant in America. The weight of this shot crucial, has he? Yes, a brilliant shot. And almost a 17 foot bank. Here he goes on the red. The pink is no trouble. He's overrun it, I think. You know, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> we don't need that. It's Just called being unsporty. Deadly right? ashamed of yourself. John Williams, it Earl's behest. Straightening out. <laughs> a bit of, a bit of an unfortunate bad order. It'll work again. The last time they did that, I, I, I messed up. The thing that Earl's got to concentrate on is keep his mind at what he's Thank doing. You. Forget about the crowd. Six easy, looking good for three apiece. The seven ball, the brown, down the bottom left, off the cushion for the eight. So, 
It's almost certain now that the Suke Hopkins match will decide the fate of the Moscone Cup as this match goes on. This for 3 3. This for 3 3. Yeah. Right. It's there. 3 3. three. Deadlock once again. Davis and O'Sullivan against Strickland and Wiley. You've got to win by two clear racks, remember? One set only, all to play for. Well, don't miss the denouement of this match, folks. As we come down to what, six o'clock, there's probably got to be one more match, but whichever way it goes, it's... But who will be the kings of the nine ball world? Nine ball just snitched the knuckle, Jim. The pink four in very close proximity to the nine ball. So CJ and Earl having a little bit of a reconnoitery chat. It's 3 3. CJ's just going to have a see of how that nine lies. He might try the plant. <coughs> He's, he might do the billiard. He might just settle for the one. Did the billiard! Brilliant! Yeah. Magic shot by CJ. Okay. Almost stuns the Essex tonsils here. 4-3. Tremendous imagination, tremendous knowledge, and that says nothing of the talent that CJ Wiley and the American team present. What a shot. Absolutely brilliant. Stuns the crowd. Europe is stunned, the crowd stunned. Earl Strickland comes out of the trance. He knows that CJ can now make that score line. It happened so quickly, no make one really knew three, what Jim. had hit him. 4-3, you you've got to win by two three. clear racks. So Strickland and Wiley breaking off here. If one goes down, yes, the, face, the faces of Davis and Ronnie will be a picture, pale picture of maybe hopes about to be dashed. Good news, bad news. Got a ball off the break, but he can't get through to the one. So Sullivan and Davis will live to fight on here. Wiley will probably be pushing out. Yeah. The Americans will do the equivalent of taking the football at the corner flag with two minutes to go. They won't rush to the table. Looking concerned about, is the query on the push out? Is there a query? Just confirming that the push out was played because referee John Williams called a foul, not a push out. 15 minutes only remaining. The Americans won't be in a hurry. Tension even then getting through to senior referees from the world of snooker. And Davis won't play fast. It is incredible tension and drama here. Yes, it's now fair to assume that Ralph Suke, the world champion, will not finish his match, the singles next. So Davis and Ronnie have got to do the business now in this match Absolutely no point in hurrying now for Steve and Ronnie. They know it. They got the watches. They know exactly how it stands, as does Danny Harriman, the kid from America. If the Americans take this rack, it's all over. Davis leaves a brilliant leave on the far rail. Has has Strickland any chance here, Jim? Doing anything other than contact? Well, if anyone can produce a rabbit from a hat, it's Earl Strickland. He can get through to the left-hand side of that one ball, and you never know what he can come up with. What do you think it is? A rack to the USA would mean that it's USA's Cup. 
He's the Alex Higgins of the pool world. A crowd favorite in America. The man that some people love to hate. Yeah, Brilliant look shot. At that shot. And look at the end off. A brilliant shot. Then Lady Luck danced in from stage left, pursued by a bear. Now Ronnie's decided to go the straight way. He's going to run it out, Jim. The red three, Rocket Ronnie. Can he spank the Yanks? He's done it throughout this Moscone Cup. Another chance. This is going to set up an amazing last track of this four-hander. You want pressure? You got pressure. Playing for a team he's never played for Europe, a late entry substituted for Jimmy White. And only knew half the rules 60 hours ago. What a performance by Ronnie. <laughs> This is for Europe, the ethos. Floated by Winston Churchill years ago, and Teddy took us in. This to set Euro cheers wildly echoing in Essex. They can hear it. Around Europe, the cheer of the crowd. 4-4, Davis and O'Sullivan against Strickland and Wiley, two of the best plays, players on the planet. You can hear it in the Urals, and maybe in Santa Fe, the cheers coming from Essex. You're now going to see a lag to see who's going to break off in the sudden death decider of this set. <laughs> Earl, a real wind-up merchant, folks. Earl the winder up in the best sense of the word. Thank you. Tight I'm not saying it's gamesmanship. But he says I'm a volatile lad when well, he's up against a guy with the cool of a Yeti with an ice cream cart. The overall score, Davis. 14 to USA, 13 Europe. Davis has won the lag. And, uh, Fun. Time coming down, 10 minutes remaining. So, if the Americans take this wreck, they take the Moscone. If Ronnie and Steve take the rack, we'll have another match. What a time to kick in three. Davis putting O'Sullivan into break. Three balls off the break, and he can get through to the one. He's no more Grumford Slim. This cuts, but he's got to watch the in off. Oh. What did I say? I had to watch the win in off. Moscone Cup could be the Americans for the taking now. Captain C.J. Wiley could cash in on a blob by Ronnie O'Sullivan, an in-off in the middle pocket. The it clock is running down, but the table could be running out. But the clock is now a team member of the Americans, because if they win this one, they'll go two points clear, and Europe won't be able to catch them. Exactly. And you couldn't want a man with the wood in his talented digits, C.J. Wiley, who's played a captain's part in talent, temperament, a cool Texan gentleman, playing this with a volatile genius against two stars from the world of snooker. And I think the Moscone that Europe won a year ago is now going back over the water back in the hands 
of the land that Willie Moscone called home. And Wiley knows it. Look at him celebrate. He's From looking the at his land, watch. The prettier Steve Miserak, Rempy, Minnesota Fats. This in their honor, Roger Griffiths. Beaming. Earl shouts out, waste a few more minutes. No more waste. Up goes Earl. And the Moscone Cup. Due to that queuing of the last four or five balls by their captain, returns to America. Look at Earl Strickland. He loves to stir it up. But the Americans have retained the Moscone Cup. There's just not enough time for Europe to come back. It's been brilliant. There were three days of Euro rolling, and then the Americans came back like the great Jesse Owens in the 100 yards. Brilliant. And the news is to be somber that Oliver Ortman of Germany concedes the match without handshake to the Americans. And out came the captain Ortman and the rest of the American squad. It's been three days of hard-fought pool. No team wilting. We're here to finish the six. Uh, I'd like you, please, to show your appreciation. And what an amazing to climax we had as Ronnie Europe and Steve tried might and main to beat the genius and the general. But Earl Strickland and CJ Wiley, All legends the in their own in the time in the States, have shown it's us been why a great challenge. America win the Moscone Cup by 1996. A tremendous Moscone World Cup. Brilliant stuff. Sponsored by Dr. Martins. A great deal. Ladies and gentlemen, and now it's presentation time. I'd like you to welcome, please, the chairman of Matchroom, the chairman of Lake Norian, and the promoter of the event, Mr. Barry Hearn, to present the Moscone Cup. Thank you, Barry. And the cup goes to America, CJ Wiley. Will you come forward, CJ? There he is, ladies and gentlemen, the captain of America, CJ Wiley. And they've come over here and they've recaptured the Moscone Cup. The United States of America, ladies and gentlemen, 